Welcome back. I'm Mark Iztook. It was a tragedy of Kennedy proportions, sudden and early death for yet another member of the Kennedy family. This one heir to the kingdom of Camelot. My initial reaction was to pray that he was all right. It was July 17th, 1999, when the news was heard around the world that a plane flown by John F. Kennedy Jr. carrying his wife Carolyn and her sister Lauren was missing. I was at home and I had the TV on and there was a mention of a missing plane and then the phone rang and it was the office. And at that point, the plane was just missing. Yeah, the hope was maybe it landed somewhere. The reaction when his plane went missing was gigantic. Well, when something like this happens, we, we spring to a full alert. It's all hands on deck, but I feared the worst, but hope for the best. The three on board were headed to Martha's Vineyard, where Lauren was to be dropped off. John and Carolyn were to proceed to Hyannisport for a family function. He had never arrived at uh, Hyannisport where he was going for his cousin's wedding. John was notorious for being late, which is why a call to the Coast Guard by a Kennedy family friend wasn't made until 2.15 in the morning. He was flying over a huge expanse of water. He could have been anywhere really between Long Island and Cape Cod. The Air Force and Coast Guard launched an extensive search at 7.30 in the morning, including 16 planes, four helicopters, and several cutter ships all along Kennedy's flight path. News spread quickly of the disappearance. We were on the air constantly, uh, hour after hour, a picture began to form. I was in uh, Indonesia stuck in traffic and uh, someone was hawking newspapers and yelled out that uh, John Kennedy's plane had gone down. Later that afternoon, debris, including a headrest, a bottle of prescription drugs belonging to Carolyn, and Lauren Bissett's suitcase surfaced on the water near the vineyard. Once that piece of luggage washed up on the shore in Massachusetts, I think everybody knew that, you know, the plane had gone down and nobody was coming back. There were no survivors from the crash. On July 20th, the plane was found with the bodies of the three passengers. So it was kind of shocking to hear that a guy that age with so much going for him was dead. A public memorial service was held three days later. Their ashes were scattered the same day at sea. I'm just going to miss him. It's a real tragic loss. He's with his earthly father and his heavenly father right now. According to the NTSB's final report a year later, the ill-fated flight took off from the Essex County Airport in New Jersey at around 8.40 on Friday, July 16th. Approximately 48 minutes later, John makes a number of maneuvers, including descending and ascending at various speeds over a very hazy coast. John's last radar position was recorded at 940. In this particular case, this was a tragic accident caused by a number of events coming together the least of which is any type of reckless behavior. The report concluded the probable cause of death was, quote, the pilot's failure to maintain control of the airplane during a descent over water at night, which was a result of spatial disorientation. Spatial disorientation is not an uncommon condition in, uh, in aviation. People get a, uh, a uh, sense of uh, perhaps uh, going down while they're moving up, while they're going to the right, they're actually going to the left. What a loss for this family, which has been sort of star-crossed with tragedy. Uh, what a loss for the community, and what a loss for the country. I'd like you all to stand, if you would, for a moment, and join me in a salute to John Kennedy, Carolyn Bissett Kennedy, and Lauren Bissett. May you rest in peace. Well, from the moment he was born, John Fitzgerald Kennedy Jr. was a star. Later on as an adult, he met many of Hollywood's rich and famous who remember him with love and respect. See somebody who goes that young, you know, it's, a, it's sad that they weren't able to stick around and give us more. And uh, everybody was infatuated with him, not only because of his dad, but because he, he's a, he cut a very romantic figure for people. Sure. I remember being in the car in Columbus Circle, and my driver said, look, there's John. Right there. Cutting across Columbus Circle, so he was cutting across the park to, to go home. I was like, wow, John Kennedy Jr. just walking by himself, regular guy in New York. I just wish he could have lived to see where we are today. He did a lot of great things for New York and was a beautiful man who was probably um, lovely to be around. So what would have happened if the heir to Camelot hadn't died in that plane crash? Could he have come full circle and followed his father into the White House? At one point, started trying to convince him to run for mayor of New York as a Republican. 